Good evening, everybody, and welcome to week three, day one of the SSBL. I am Fysak on the call, joining you here for what is going to be, it's an historic week, guys, because we've got for the first ever a title sponsor for the game of the night. More details will come through from Josh in the coming days, but essentially the third game of the night, every single night, will be the SSBL game of the night presented by Turtle Beach. I am not kidding right now. If you are present and watching the game of the night each week, you will be entered in to win a Turtle Beach headset. Even more of a reason to tune in each week to the SSBL. No, I will not be showing my face uh, but if you wanted to see me bald, it's not really bald. I just like shaved it. Uh, does it, does this work if it's just twitter.com slash Fisac? I think I think that should take you to. Yeah, that does. And if you scroll down uh, a little bit, you can see me. I have shaved my head. Uh, you can see me there when I was doing the March Madness stuff. So that's where you can find my bald head. You will not be seeing it tonight. We've got some great action on the docket tonight. We've got Retrievers at the Moonshots. Narwhal taking the mound for the Retrievers. Luigi taking the mound for the Moonshots in the battle of the Defeateds to see who will emerge with their first win of Season 8. Following that, we've got Bombers at Skulls of Rock, a huge matchup at the Bingata Bowl. Bombers looking for their first win. Skulls of Rock looking to end a losing skid and get back in competitions in what is a tightly fought or should be tightly fought Epic Nova's Conference. From there, we've got our SSBL Game of the Night presented by Turtle Beach. It's the Lumberjacks at the Rom Fielders at Colonial Plaza. It's the only matchup this season that we will see of them in the regular season. And what is looking like two of the potential title contenders in the Heroic. That's Baronies on the mound for the Jacks and Days on the mound for the Rom Fielders. And then we'll end things off at Founders Field. With Gauchos at Express, Gauchos looking to keep on rolling after their first win of the season in what is a surprising uh, Heroic Evolution Conference with the Romfielders ahead so far. That's Carter on the mound for them against Heinke for the Express. Well, no use in delaying it. Without further ado, let's go on and head to our first game of the night. We'll head to the Big Sky Ballpark to see the Retrievers at the Moonshots. How is everybody doing tonight? Are you in for some SSB action? Feel free to vote in the poll today. Who you think is gonna win tonight? Now it's gotta be said Mario Luigi. This is not the Mario Luigi that you all know and love. This is a shattered shell of a man. Just look at those stats. Might as well have said he was on steroids because he's got absolutely no junk anymore. We are underway here at Big Sky Ballpark. Harold McHenry leading things off for the retrievers. Good boy down the line. That one's fierce. Trigger sweets with a nice dive, but Nowhere near the arm speed to throw out it. Mick Henry there. And there is a board. Now I'll bring up Sammy Ferrari. Runner takes out for a second. The throw is in plenty of time. Sit down. This ball is hit well. Tracking back at the track and all. It's out of here. Ferrari. Goes Oppo and puts the retrievers up 1 0. Now batting the third baseman, number 47. That one is up the middle. What do you mean by that, Marge? Now the left fielder, In terms of like all time matchups or. So far, a hit for every single player. And Buns will continue that. That shouldn't be ruled near. That should be ruled a hit. Now batting, the first some early team, struggles for Luigi. Oh. 
Pew only needs 20 hits to officially become the best to ever play when he takes the hit lead. That is true, and that reminds me that I do need to get those all-time stats out. I forgot that we had those. And slow it's make it five for five. First round pick in the season seven draft. Swing and a miss, she got caught there. And for the first time tonight, a retriever does not get a hit. I'll bring up Raman Nunez as I can pull up these all time stats. Louts through the left side, and that's gonna score another. Gonna be 2 0 to the retrievers. Five of the first six batters getting a hit against Luigi, and that brings up Dale Blanco Jr. Up the middle, make it six for seven, make it two or three nothing retrievers. Now back the second baseman, number four. Oh, nice stop there by Blanco, and this time they record the out. We'll head to the bottom of the first Hugh Morgan Sweets to lead things off. I didn't even realize we've got Blanco versus Blanco Jr. on opposite sides of the heroic icons here. Zelda Narwhal on the mound. Swing and a miss. She rang him up there. The newly acquired Marlon Morgan coming over from the ball players, I believe. Along with Taft Latham. Swing and a miss. He gets rung up there. Two gone. Now Sugar Sweets. Dribbler. Darwall will go one, two, three. We'll head to the top of the second. No dice for the moonshots. A three burger for the retrievers. Honey Bear, then top of the order, do up. The catcher, number 37. Reaver is looking to remedy a issuing loss to the Walkers. 3-5 was that score line. That one's into right and Honey Bear is aboard. Now back, the center fielder. I mean, I'll tell you what, getting seven of your first nine batters to get a hit will certainly help. Make it eight of the first 10. That one is into the gap. That one's trouble. It is just going to be a double. Retrievers, runners on second and third, and this is going to get ugly pretty quickly here. to the track to the wall it's out of here three run shot and the retrievers are putting out a statement here early now batting, second three, straight three, homer three, for three, Ferrari seven. this time she goes deep center gonna be a long night for the moonshots gonna be a long season for the moonshots this one's popped in to ride him mercifully. We should have our first out of the inning. Now back, the left fielder, number 25. And many, myself included, have said that the Moonshots are probably the worst team in the Heroic this season, even worse than some of the expansion sides. 
Is there for the second hour baseman number 14. This ball is hit well. That one is tracking back. That one is out of the wall. It's out of here onto the upper tier, and it's seven nothing retrievers, 448 feet for the number one overall pick from season seven. Now the designated hitter, number 47. And he gets run up there, but not before the retrievers add four. There are 10 hits off of Luigi in the first now two innings. The second baseman, number seven. And I'll tell you what, the, the Moonshots are giving the Angels run for their money in terms of worst team in the SSBL. I definitely think the Angels are far worse. Oh. Like the Junior was the first out. The right fielder. Right, Blanco Jr. there again. The shortstop, number 12. Narwa locked in. Swing and a miss. She got rung up there. Head to the third. Blanco Jr. Dickerson Bear do up. Now battle. The right fielder, number 38. Yeah, I, I would agree on that assessment. Both are putrid, but one has a much better future than the other. That one's to Benani. And for the first time this game, the retrievers do not have a leadoff hit to start the inning. Mythic. Yeah, Mythic are trying hard, but also, have you seen what the Angels do? That one is into left. That one drops down, and that'll be another hit. Thought about second, but didn't. The thing is, is that lotto odds mean nothing. Like, the way that we've set it up, as that's going to do it for Luigi, Newcastle will come in. It, it is... Yes, it is better to tank in terms of like for the later rounds, but honestly, for the first round, it's just as good to not make it into the postseason after the trial. Now batting, the center fielder, number 10. Oh my gosh, Marge, who let this happen? North, and for the first time this game, the retrievers will not score anything. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Third night, Dale Blanco Sr. and Bellator Curls do up. Hitter, number 16. Right to Dickerson. Lowitz is there to make the catch. Dale Blanco now. Swing and a miss. He got rung up there. Now bring up Bellator Curls. Carl still locked in. This one is into center. And that one will get down in front of McHenry. That ruins the perfect game bid. It was only the third, but with as dominant as Norval was looking. Swing and a miss. He gets rung up. Head to the top of the fourth. Ferrari, McSorley, Barry Buns do up. For the retrievers. Now the shortstop, number 55. 
Supposedly there is an RTX 3070 available the third baseman, number 47. at Best Buy. I just got in line. We'll see if I get it. Six hundred and eighty dollars. That a good deal. That one's right to north. Throw to first. In time, two gone. Now back the left fielder, number twenty-five. That one is up the middle. Two out single. The first baseman, number 14. That's not available within 250 miles of me. Allen's up the middle again, another two out single. Yeah, I've got the 1060 right now. I definitely, the first step is to get a 3070. The next step is to get a uh, new MOBO and CPU and then upgrade the monitor. As he gets run up there. That's at the bottom of the fourth. Morgan seats Banani deal for the moonshots. I mean, sure, if you want to, lasers. But uh, it's probably all sold out everywhere. That one's right to Ferrari. Throw to first in time. One go. Now batting the third baseman. Number 28. Popped up. Dickerson. Has it there? Now back, the second baseman, number seven. Otani Banani. Staying alive versus Narwhal. Narwhal at 42 pitches through 3.2 innings. And he gets rung up there. Led to the top of the fifth. Blanco Jr. Dickerson, Honey Bear, due up for the retrievers. The scroll needs to, I feel like the scroll needs to go a little bit faster. And he gets rung up there. The second baseman, number 40. Is that too fast for the scroll? This one is into right and caught by high time. Well, that is the catcher, number 37. Honey Bear. Didn't even notice the change. <laughs> Might bumping up a tiny. Er, no, that's honestly that's kind of fat. Dosky. That one laced up the middle. Now back the center fielder. He's up. Harold McHenry, two for three today. In the fifth inning. Three for four. Another two out single. And now here is Sammy Ferrari who has two long balls so far today.
Damn, what if she got a third home run? And Settle go right to Del Planko. <laughs> Second baseman really made the dive for it. 15 hits for the Retrievers. That did the bottom of the fifth. Hightower North Knight do up for the Moonshots. This one fly down to right. We'll dive before the wall. Blanco Jr. is there. This is just the second game for both of these teams. Despite the fact that some teams have already played five games this season. Moonshot started off with a 3 10 loss to the overdrafts. These two teams will meet again at Sakura Hills later on this season. That's a 1 2 3 inning. Totally bun slow, it's due up. Retrievers again getting shot. Day two of action. The 5 3 loss to a Walker team that has cooled down since their start. And they've got just the schedule that you would hope for if you are a Retrievers fan to right the ship at the Express tomorrow and then home against the Liberty. So, barring miraculous actions here. That will do it for Castle. Pat Gross will come in. The uh, Retrievers should be on pace to go 3-1. and one. Yeah, it's an interesting schedule. This one is into center. Owner is aboard. It, what it is is that like the fact that we have so many Super Saturdays really truncates it. And we've got 16 games in three months for each team. Which averages to more than a game a week. Oh no, Dale Blanco is injured. Sprained wrist. The old man, the osteoporosis, caught up to him. The designated hitter, number 47. That might not be anything. Thank you, mate. Walk there. That is a tier one injury. The right fielder. Which is a one week stint. And they do play again tomorrow. Oh no! And now Pat Gross is dead! One injury at a time, boys! Number 55. Extreme pain. And that's exactly what the doctor ordered. So both of those are tier one injuries. By Sammy Ferrari. Things that Bellator curls. Let's see, that is, these are both moon shots.
Right to Ferrari. Two gone. Now batting the left fielder. And he gets run up there. We head to the seventh, 18 hits for the Retrievers, but only eight runs. And she rings him up. Now batting the center fielder, number 10. Ooh, Pat Gross is a relief pitcher, so they are going to need to call him. Right. And the first in time for the second out. The shortstop, number 55. One is over the head, and that's another two out double for the retrievers. Now batting the third baseman, number 47. That one's right to north. And that will do it as we head into the seventh inning stretch. I want to thank everybody for tuning in to week three, day one of the SSBL. I'm Fisak on the call. Make sure that you are following the official SSBL Twitch. That's a prime sub if you're so inclined. Be sure to join the Discord to find out all the latest stats, standings, everything SSBL related. He gets a run up there. Well, yeah, I only watched the F1 race because I was doing stats for the women's tournament. I actually don't watch Indy or NASCAR. I would probably be more likely to watch Indy than NASCAR. That one is up the middle. Now back, the second baseman, number seven. Well, what's uh, what's with the new car in NASCAR? I think with the thing with NASCAR is that it it is just like the circle, and so it's harder to like for me at least to stay involved with it. As the moonshots are gonna score their first run of the game, still can tell the seventh. Don't call it a comeback. Seriously, don't call it a comeback. Yeah, I, I do prefer F1 to NASCAR. I just don't, the like, the, the driving in circles is just like, I don't know, it's monotonous to me. I much prefer you have to turn right and then left. Right to Slowitz, and the damage will stay at one. Head to the top of eighth, Bun Slowitz Nunez do up. Now batting the left fielder, 
Yeah, I do know that most of their races are ovals, but I would be inclined to watch the races in which they're not in ovals. I mean, not really. I disagree. I really like the new regulations. I think they made it a lot more interesting. Now, Monaco is horrendous. Mo Monaco is just a parade. But most of the other ones, there's I just feel like there's so much more strategy in them. And the marketing makes me think that there's more strategy in them. Now batting, the designated hitter, number 47. Because Monaco is just trashed here. Swing and a miss there. But the runners do advance. Ah! Sorry, the remote drop. We're good. Off the wall, two will score. Now batting the second baseman, number 40. 10 one retrievers. I mean, that's the thing is that in NASCAR, I guess you have more passing, but the issue is that like, it's only in circles for a lot of them. I would, I would rather watch like, I would rather watch more of a parade where it's passing in DRS and it's, in those turns, then watch more passing when it's in circles. Now batting, the catcher, number 18. Runner on first for Bellator Curls. The deficit is nine. Curls earns a walk. Yeah, I feel like I should watch IndyCar. I also, uh, I interned for the Rowdies, as that's going to do it for Narwhal. Seven innings for her. Hot dartboard will come in. Because, like, uh, I interned for the Rowdies, which is right next to where the St. Pete Grand Prix is. Like, literally, Al Lang is a part of it. So I really should watch it. And I, and I would have someone to watch, because I like Romain Grosjean. The man who was on fire. As he gets rung up there. The center fielder, number Marlon Morgan. Hit well, tracking back at the track at the wall. He's out of here, ringing off the ball, the moonshots. They still know how to score runs. Morgan breaks an 0-3 skid and gets his first run as a moonshot. Mucha's starting to find their rhythm a little bit here. Yeah, I uh, I toured the um, Carolina Esports Hub today, and they've got obviously Charlotte is home to NASCAR, so they've got iRacing as that's the slowest to Ferrari back to Slowitz. 
He ends the ninth with the 6 1 deficit. Retrievers looking to get their first win of the season. But uh, they have the Charlotte Phoenix, which have teams in Apex, Rocket League, and iRacing. And their iRacing is actually local. I think my urges to do iRacing just need to subside enough for F1 manager to come out and then that'll satisfy my auto racing pitch. Here is Sammy Ferrari. She has had herself a day, two home runs and a double. Right side and slow it. Now a triple away from the cycle, but he's not going to be able to do that today. Now I'll do it for Nina Jacks, Rainy Getty, the new acquisition from the Angels. Again, more so coming over in terms of getting draft pick. That one into left, that one will get down, and it is now 11 to 4 moonshot, or 11 to 4 retrievers. Woo! Now batting the left fielder, number 25. Only one out this right. inning. Batter watching now the bases are loaded for Maggie Slowitz. Four for five, a home run, and three singles today. Oh, really, Marge? That would actually really interest me. Into left. Caught by an AQ. Runner will come home. It's 12 4. Now batting, the designated hitter. Yeah, I'm definitely interested in March. Oh. Ramen Nunez. This is the last relief pitcher for the Moonshots. Hey. Yeah, send him my way. That one is into right. One run will score. Another run will score. It's a bases clearing double, and it is 14 to 4 retrievers. Now batting the right fielder, number 38. Dale Blanco Jr. That one is in the dirt. Runner caught in between second and third. We'll head back. And the damage will stop at 14. 25 hits for the Retrievers. 14 now runs scored. The right fielder, number Jordy Hightower five. to lead things off. Full count to Plum North. Stays alive. Swing and a miss. She got run up there. Moonshots down to their last out.
His ball is skied into center at the track and making the catch is Harold McHenry. And the Retrievers get their first win of season eight. A 14 to four stomping, out hitting the Moonshots 25 to seven. Everyone getting in on the action for the Retrievers, even Barbara Dickerson one for five. Buns and Slowitz each four for five. Ferrari with two home runs. Decent hitting relatively for some of the hitters for the Moonshots, but it was just the pitching that just let everything through. Mario Luigi gets seven earned runs in 2.1 innings. Pat Gross doesn't even record an out. Zelda Narwhal gets the win. Sammy Ferrari, your player of the game, followed by Slowitz and then Dale Blanco Jr. Well, that'll do it for game number one. When we come back, we've got the Bombers at the Schools of Rock. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the SSBL right here on Twitch. Welcome back. We're heading to the Bingata Bowl. It's summer on the mound versus I remember, I remember Malone. Water Walter Malone. Of course, the uh, bombers dealing with some injuries. Number 89. That one gets through on the left side. Rifleman is aboard with a double. Galileo Cap settles it. Graham Britton will return next week, day two, with an inflamed Achilles. Lucy Freishak does not return for another two weeks with elbow pain. The right side, Wreck Dreams steps on the bag, one gone. The center fielder, number 42.
right to Botley. Throw to first in time, but the Bombers the score first. Number 55. I'm saying this is a must win for both teams. The Bombers just to get a semblance of stability. Do not want to go 0-3 like the Dragons did and then have to rely on your fourth starter to get their first win. Right to Dreams for the third out. Now batting the second baseman, number 21. Vote in the poll who you think will win. Nice time by pool holes, but the throw to first will not be in time. Botley is aboard. Botley batting first for the schools of rock tonight brings up santa ram a little bit of change in the order as Ryan takes out for a second the throw is in time sit down botley and she rings him up brings up alicia kim Who holds this time with plenty of time to throw to first? Bombers with a 1 0 lead. Luther, Dadel, Crusha, Irons do up now for the Bombers. The first baseman, number 20. Air ball, throw to first in time. The designated hitter, number 26. This ball is jacked, heading deep, back to the track, but caught by Kipshaw Jr. Call it a Bingada ball. This ball will get down this time. Okay, no need, no need to call me out. That ball, you tell me that that ball didn't look like it was heading out. Number 78. That one to Buzziel, the throw home is in time! Oh, Whitney, look away! Absolutely gunned down. And the lead will stay at one. Dribbler, pool holes, he's been active so far today. Third ball hit to him through the first five batters. Summer has lots of velocity, so with these left-handed batters, those late swings. That one's right to Luther. One, two, three inning. We'll head to the top of the third. Demons, Rifleman, Hugh Jr. do up. Now batting the shortstop. Number 25. 
right to uh, Carol Henry, throw the first in time. Now batting the right fielder, number 89. Here comes Rifleman. Up the middle, and he's now got two for two for today. Single and a double. Now back, the left fielder, number three. Nick Hugh Jr. Runner takes off for a second. The throw is not in time. The rifleman at second. Swing and a miss. He got rung up there. Number 42. Brings up Kent Iffy Jr. Runner takes off for third. The throw is not in time. I'm sure that's giving Whitney heart attacks. But in the end, it amounts to nothing. Rats playing the two stolen bases, but they can't convert. Led to the bottom of the third. Mannequin Henry Cat do up. The catcher, number 21. And he gets swung up there, got looking. The shortstop, number 44. Quickly 3-0. Summer battles back. And there is an out great pitching duel there for Summer. Up the middle. Two out single. Swing and a miss. Botley goes down. This is the top of the fourth. Been a quiet game so far. Pool holes lead things off. Walk issued. Here's Dadiel Krusha. Number 26. Get your votes in the polls. Who you think will win? Currently, Bombers leading three to one. Tough out activated for Dadiel Krusha. Good swing, but loops foul. And oh, 
a dive attempts there. We'll still get the out at first. The runner at second, two gone. Here is Ferris Irons. Left side, Santa Ram makes the throw, not in time. Irons beats it out. Brings up Dam Armstrong Hula. Locked in. But that's right to dreams. Once again, the Bombers can't convert. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth. Ram Kim Yellow do up for the Skulls. Now back, the third baseman, number 25. Irons to lose there for the first out. The designated hitter, number seven. That's low. That one is up the middle. Runner on first for Buzz Yellow. Runner takes off for a second. It was a called hit and run. Yellow staying alive. Some are up to 56 pitches. That one just foul and for the benefit of the Skulls. This one popped up. Irons is able to make the grab. Now batting the first baseman, number 13. That one is through the left side. Skulls a little bit of life here in the bottom of the fourth. Kip Shaw Jr. now. Runners on first and second with plenty of speed. But Summer is able to wrap it up. Both teams struggling to convert base runners into runs. Demons in top of the order do up for the bombers. The shortstop, number 25. That one drops down in front of Buzz Yellow. This one hit well into right, tracking back at the track of the wall. He's out of here, Rifleman shoots it out into right. And the Bombers take a crucial 3-0 lead. Did they just miss that high five? Go back, I think they missed that high five. It didn't look like they made contact there. Into left, and the Bombers laying down the hits here, yet to have an out. Now batting, the center fielder, number 42. Richardson. Called hit and run, fouled off. 
Dive there at short, but the ball goes through. Now batting the third baseman, number 55. Henry, the second in time to first, not going to be in time. Runners on the corners, one out, and here is Lexi Luther. Bombers trying to extend their lead. That one is off of the glove of Henry, and she goes to second instead of first. Number 26. It's now 4-0 Bombers, still one out, and here is Daydelk Russia. That one, this time, caught by Henry. Now batting the second baseman, number two. That one is up the middle, and another run will score. It's 5 nothing Bombers. Now batting the catcher, number 78. Nope. Runner takes off for a second. The throw is in the dirt. Would have had him. deep to the track and they did it to me again they did it to me again the second time this game i hate bingo i hate bingo this is uncorrigible i hate everything i'm not i'm not speaking for this next battle i'm not That's what the game gets for for blue ball or like that. It's not fun for everybody. That one caught by Demons. What a snag! Brings up Galileo. Galileo cat. One, two. That one through the right side. Two out single. And now here is Vima Min Botley. Summer locked in, but approaching 80 pitches. That one's right to Demons for the third out. The head to the six. Demons will lead things off. Rifleman Hugh Jr. do up for the Bombers. And that'll do it for Walter Malone. Sidney Weber gets the call. We go into the bullpen for the first time today for either of these teams. Right to Botley for the first out. He's got a home run. He's got a double. He's got a single. He's got a ground out. Welcome back to you, Mr. Rifleman. We'll watch your career with great expectations. Here is Nick Hugh Jr. Turns a walk. Now back, the Kent Iffy Jr. Number 42. <laughs> Dribbler Botley into first in time. Up to the bomb of the inning. Ram Kim Yellow. Do up for the skulls. Now back, the third baseman, number 
25. Is a Luther. He's at Alicia Kim. All right, back to the pitcher. Two gone. Buzz Yellow. And that'll be one, two, three. Bombers starting to pull away here. Head to the seventh. Pool holes lead things off. Now batting the third baseman, number 55. That one, Bomber special into right. Lead off singer for pool holes. The first baseman, number 20. That one is jacked, heading deep to the track and off of the bottom of the track this time. When I say jacked, it actually results in a hit. Six nothing Bombers. Daydale Crush it now with a runner on second. Right to Ram. One gone. The second baseman, number two. Looper, that one will be foul. To the window, to the wall. Swing and a miss, that's two gone now. Now back, the catcher, number seven. Damn Armstrong Hula. Hopped up, Ram makes the grab. We head to the seventh inning stretch. Want to thank everybody for tuning in for week three, day one action of the SSBL. I'm Fisek on the call. Make sure that you're following the official SSBL Twitch. Send us a prime sub if you're feeling so inclined, and join the Discord. Find out all the latest news in the SSBL. Uh, hello, robot. Can you like be on the job? You literally have one job, and that job is to respond when I command you to. So respond when I command you to, you know what? Or else I'll be taking you out to pasture. This one to Demons for the first out. Now back, the center fielder, number 33. That one over the head at first. Now the catcher, Kevin Mannequin, tense, 0 for 2 today. This one is into center, and that will be 2. Now batting, is that Carol Henry? Number 44. Right to pool holes. And we'll head to the eighth. It's still a six run deficit for the Skulls. Demon, top of the order, do up. Now batting the shortstop, number 25. This ball is hit well into right. That'll be extra bases for Demons. It'll be a triple for Demons. Number 
Mannequin, that one is down the line, foul. Not Mannequin, Rifleman. He's got a single today. He's got a double today. He's got a home run today. He's missing one slot there, and he looks like he's not going to get it today. Now batting the left fielder, number three. Yeah, some are doing well for the Bombers as Whitney is here. That one right side, Botley with the dive for the second out. Now back, the center Ify fielder, Jr. Number 40. Now pitching, number and Jesus Shuttlesworth will now come in. Dribbler, well, what was that bounce? That was weird. Head to the bottom of the eighth. Galileo, 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 Cat, do up. Fielder, number 18. Left side, Nikki Jr. will settle it. Now back. Beamerman Botley, now pitching. as that Number will one. do it for Summer. Smitty Werbenman Jagerman Jensen. Werben, Werben Jagerman Jensen. Werben Jagerman Jensen. Werben Jagerman Jensen. Final answer. Werben Jagerman Jensen. As he gets rung up there. Oh, Whitney, you should have seen the uh, Retrievers game. They nearly had 30 hits and they only scored 14 runs. Cool holes to Irons. To Luther, the Dragon special to end the inning. Well, that's the top of the ninth. Pool holes, Luther, Daydell, Crusha do up for the Bombers. The third baseman, number 55. Number 55. I'm I'm Al Pujols Jr. This one's into right, and that one drops in front of Buzz Yellow. Yeah, they had like what 27 hits. The first baseman, number 20. And they only scored 14 runs. It was a lot. It was a lot of hits. It's part of the reason why the stream is going on so long. Swing and a miss, she gets run out there. Brings up Mickey Get Out Crusher. Number 26. That one's right to Botley for the second out. Now batting the second baseman. Number and the two. Bombers need to get the next three batters through on base. Otherwise, Rifleman will not have a chance. And he won't have a chance. Rifleman was on cycle watch but couldn't execute. We'll head to the bottom of the ninth. Kim Yellow Dreams due up for the skulls. They've yet to score a run on seven hits. The designated hitter, number seven. Luther's there. The right fielder, number four. Right to Demons, two gone Skulls down to their last out. As when he says his cleanup crew needs to do better, despite the fact that the Skulls have not scored a single run this game. Ball is hit well, but foul. 
Swing and a miss. He gets rung up there, and the Bombers will not go 0 oh and 3. Instead, they will go 1 and 2 as they record the win here. 6 0 over the Skulls of Rock. Rifleman nearly had the cycle, is just missing the triple. Ferris Irons, 3 for 5 on the day. For the Skulls of Rock, not a lot of hits anywhere, but Galileo, 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 Cat, 3 for 3. Whoa! Maury Summer gets the win. 7 hits, no earned runs. For Werben Jaegerman Jensen, 2 strikeouts, no base runners allowed. Walter Malone gets the loss. <laughs> Where the game is, Hamish Rifleman, followed by Maury Summer and Lexi Luther. Well, that does it for that game as we are about to head into the SSBL game of the night. Presented by... Turtle Beach. As I want to welcome Chrome into the broadcast booth. Chrome, what have you seen from the game so far tonight? What are you looking forward to in our nightcap? I'm looking forward to seeing um, what the, these... So yeah, the, the Lumberjacks are playing the wrong fielders, right? Yes, so at Colonial I Plaza. See... I want to see how the wrong fielders do against the Lumberjacks because the the wrong fielders has kind of like they impressed me in in their last games, especially Pedro Cruz. Pedro Cruz has been playing great in my opinion so far. And I just want to see how Pedro is gonna play against the Lumberjacks. I just want to see how this is gonna go down with that. Lineup for the Lumberjacks. Let's see what we have here. It's Barrel Knees versus Days on the mound for each of these teams. For the Lumberjacks, the order is... Destroyer, Gonzalez, Brainstorm, Tygo, Hecker, Dream, Bartko Jr., Callens, Luzon. So no changes. For the ROM fielders, it is Rainy Days on the mound. And they have in their lineup Dartboard leading off, followed by Roundamount at second. Cruz, who you mentioned, batting third for them. Elderberry batting cleanup in left. Lasers at first. Rudy DHing. Then Saturn at third, Wayne and Wright, Brick House at center. As we will head over to Colonial Plaza. As we do indeed have the SSBL game of the night presented by Turtle Beach. What I need everyone to do right now is I need you to type in here in all caps if you are here watching the SSBL game of the night presented by Turtle Beach. If you do so, you will be entered into a drawing at the end of the week to win a Turtle Beach headset. All right, that's cool. I posted in there. And another thing I'm curious about in this game is, is it going to be an offensive game? Like the first game, 14 to four retrievers, Will it be like the same thing as that game, or will it be like game two, where it's like, you know, a shutout? You know what I'm talking about? I'm kind of curious to see what this game's going to be like. Well, let's hope for a little bit of a faster game, because I've got an out at 9.15. I can, I can wait if I have to, but would much prefer to be done in the next hour with both of the games that we have. So we'll see how fast we can get through. Yeah, that's like the good and bad thing about baseball. Like, what's good is that there's no time, but what's bad, at least to me, that there's no time. One, two, three inning for the Lumberjacks. Vote in the poll who you think will win in our game of the night presented by Turtle Beach. We got Chrome, we've got Elder, Puppet, Wit, 
Lasers, DDC, no hummus. Here is Shelby coming around about. No, and I would prefer if one team didn't get nearly 30 hits. Lasers. Remember game one, 14 to four in favor of the receivers as she gets run up there. And 6-0 in favor of the bomber. So currently the away sides are doing well. Here is Chrome's player to watch, Pedro Cruz. Yeah, I saw this guy in the minors and he was a beast in the minors. So let's see if he's gonna continue, you know, doing well here. And Ooh. he gets rung up there, not the way you want to start it off. We get to the top of the second, Tygo Hecker Dream, do up. Now batting the designated hitter, number 10. The schedule should be updated now. As he gets run up there. The third baseman brings up Flip Hecker. This one into right. Diving catch by Woden Wayne. That was a great catch right there. A phenomenal effort. And now Dream down 0-2. Swing and a miss! He gets run up there! Eldberry lasers fruity to lead things off for the Rom fielders here in the bottom of the second. Fielder number 99. Number 99. Popped up. And easily grabbed by Brainstorm for the first out. So Chrome, what have you seen so far in these first two weeks of action? Anything that has been surprising to you? Anything that's sort of been par for the course? Is this one is looped by Lasers into center, and that'll be a double for Lasers. Uh, well, Biggest thing I've seen, obviously, is the rise in strikeouts, but that's because of the update to the game, not really to the teams themselves. And I guess just, I guess just that really. And also like, I guess like the, what happened with the walkers where they like won the first two games, I was not really expecting that either. So. That one has popped up and Baronies makes the catch. That one right to brainstorm throw to first in time. The lasers double amounts to nothing. We'll head into the top of the third. Barco Jr. Callens lose on due up for the Lumberjacks. A reminder to type in here in all caps if you haven't already. We'll be entered in for a drawing at the end of the week as we have the SSBL game of the night presented by Turtle Beach and a free Turtle Beach headset. Swing and a miss. He gets rung up there. Three of the last four Lumberjack batters have gone down swinging. Right to Saturn, throw to first in time, two gone. Whitney saying he thinks that the Rom Theaters have to score on Berenice while in the game. Not sure if the Rom Theaters can get to Steel Flex and Nochio. Yeah, because that um, Lumberjack's bullpen is very strong, so. That one is into right, and that ends the perfect game bid by Days. Now battle. Back to the top of the order. Looks like we've got 
three votes for the wrong fielders to think that they are going to take this over the Lumberjacks. This is locked in. 2-2 two, two count, runner on first. That one right to dart forward, throw to first in time. So both teams now with a hit. It's the bottom of third, Walter Wayne Brick. House and Andrea Dartboard the right for the long fielders. Number 11. Oh. When you say this is a prove it game for the long fielders, I do have a bone to pick with myself, which is that I said the Dragons were going to have the advantage in the next matchup versus the Rom Fielders. I thought the Rom Fielders 4 was against the Dragons 1 as he gets rung up there. But uh, no, it's the Rom Fielders 1 versus the Dragons 1. I find it weird that Brickhouse has the Steelers trait when her speed is really low. That's just the way fate works. You know, when, when we're randomly assigning the uh, traits to players. Oh, is it? Was that from the wheel? The the traits wheel? No, not from the trait wheel. That's oh. just from. Uh, well, I mean, sometimes it happens from the uh, wheel, but oftentimes it just happens from the random generation that Zarbi does. Oh, okay. That one is up the middle. Dark board is a board. She's also a woman, but she's also a board. Shelby coming around the mount. Runner at first, two gone. Barony is locked in. Two, two. That one fouled off. Fouled off again. Great at bat from round him out. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that Ooh. just misses. Runner goes, and runner will make it to third. Great at bat. Is that I, that may have been strike three missed there? Yeah, that looked like a strike to me, but I guess it was not. So it, it helped the wrong fielders. Quickly 3-0 to Cruz. 3-1. Full count. Ooh. Runner takes off and oh. he gets rung up there. Cruz, well, you said on, that you were looking at Cruz to see what he could do, and so far today he hasn't produced. Right to the top of fourth, Gonzalez to lead things off. I'll tell you what it was, Puppet. It wasn't good. Yeah, that was not a good swing at all. Come on, Cruz. You can do better than that. And she rings him up. Days doing well so far on the mound. Now has to face off against Denver Brainstorm. One of the best hitters in the league. Caught by Cruz for the second out. One, two to Tank Tygo, and he gets rung up there. And Chrome Rainy Days is having a day on the mound right now. Yeah, definitely. The left fielder, number 99. Right to Kodiak Destroyer, but it's a single. Elderberry aboard now here is Boomer Lasers. That's low. 
the <laughs> days of our lives. <laughs> Baronies up to 60 pitches now with this upcoming throw. And he oh. rings him up there. Brings up Trudy Fruity. Number 18. Runner takes off for second. The throw not in time. Elderberry oh. sneaks through and takes off for third. And it's Whoa. in the dirt. They would have had him. Dang. I was not expecting him to be safe on that steal of third. What is happening right now? Runners on the corners. Infield plays in for Sophia Saturn. 69th pitch coming up for Baronies. Whiffer activated for Saturn. Swing and a miss. Living up to the treat. And that brings up Woden Wayne. A golden opportunity here for the ROM fielders. Can they break through? They got runners on first and third. Let's. Ooh. Is that gonna be? That'll nope, be foul, foul, and it'll drop. Two-two count to Wayne. Dribbler, Hecker, oh, oh. to first in time. <laughs> Did you get thrown off by the the left-handed third baseman? Oh yeah, that was kind of strange. Well, the wrong fielders once again can't Number convert. 18. Brom Fielder start off season 3-0, 4-1 win over the Liberty as that one's right to round them out for the first out. Got a 3-2 win over the Dragons and a 5-4 win over the Walkers. We'll face the Dragons tomorrow in a battle of the number one. Currently lead the Heroic Evolution with that 3-0 record, of course. The Gauchos will be playing their second game of the season after this against the Express. So that 3-0 margin, we'll see how long it can hold. Lumberjacks on the other hand, 9-5 win on opening on their first game of the season against the Dragons. Then a 5-2 win at the Liberty. They also will play the Express next. Right to brainstorm, throw the first in time. Here is dartboard. Right to lose on for the second out. Jelby round him out. Now, Chrome, when we look at the heroic, it's very different in terms of the scope of the divisions. As Denver brainstorm, what a dive! One, two, three, will end at the top of the six, still knotted up at zero. The, the Lumberjacks look like they have the most straightforward path of anybody as they are in a division with the Expansion Express who are pending an 0-4 start should the Gauchos emerge victorious after this. A Viking squad that has some phenomenal starters but not really, lack, uh, really lacking more so in the bullpen depth. The Knights who are supposedly supposed to be taking this season the Lumberjacks have a little bit more straightforward because that one is popped up Fade Goose for the second out. The Heroic Icons, you've got the Overdrafts who are 4-0. The Retrievers who look on pace to start 3-1 given their schedule upcoming. Moonshots and Liberty, both teams that are not going to be fighting for many wins. And then you have the Evolution as he gets rung up there. I I'm just trying to pass some time and the game is speedy along. Who's to lead things off here for the ROM fielders? I, I, I promise I have a prompt for you after this, Crow. <laughs> for Cruz, for Cruz, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Just, just play like you are. Just do what you want to do. I'm not going to tell you nothing. I'm not trying to jinx you or, stuff or nothing like that. Just do what you, whatever. <laughs> well, he's already down 0-2. 
doesn't doesn't do a horrible hack at that one. Misses low 2-2. Two, two. And that one's right to Hecker. But uh, the evolution is interesting. You have the Dragons at one and three who were thought to have been competing with the Gauchos for this division. You got the Walkers who should be 0-4 but are 2-2 two two, right there in the mix. The wrong fielders who are 3-0 and, oh, and the Gauchos who are 1-0. Oh. So three very different divisions, Chrome, in the Heroic right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's kind of like with, with the Dragons. I'm, I, You know with the Dragons, your own team, that you expect them to be better than what the record is, you know? Like, As he rings them up there, without a doubt. There is, it's been a difficult start. Granted, some great opponents. Lumberjacks utterly dominated in that first game. Wrong fielders. It was a close one. Should have had some some better hitting. And then the overdrafts. I mean, the overdrafts just out, absolutely outclassed. As this ball is jacked, heading deep back to the track, to the wall. It's out of here. Lasers lobs it over the right field wall. 413 feet, and the wrong fielders strike first. That was a great home run by Lasers right there. Now pitching. Number 17. That'll do it for Baronese Wassa, dude. Coming in for <laughs> relief. Yo, we broke the curse of Mitch. We won a playoff game. Swing and a miss. She gets swung up there, but not before the Ron Fielders strike. It's 1 0 heading to the top of the seventh. From so far, the Lumberjacks are just one hit today. And Rainy Days is at 58 pitches entering the seventh. Yeah. I think maybe it has to do with the specialist trait, maybe. We do know how much Lasers loves his pitchers with traits. Swing and a miss. G rings him up. Rainy days making it rain on the jacks and here is Denver brainstorm over to today and she is on fire That one will that was close to being cut over. I believe that is no not dartboard there Who's that second? That's roundabout right? Roundabout is that second loops over the glove of roundabout So runner aboard near St. Tygo and I mean we are one swing away from a lumberjacks lead here Jacks definitely have the bats and power to do it because that's right to Saturn for the second out. Now Brings up Flip Hecker. Number 18. Nope. Right. And he gets rung up there. As we head to the seventh inning stretch, I want to thank everybody for joining in here for the SSBL Game of the Night presented by Turtle Beach. I am Fysak, joining the call by Chrome. Make sure that you are following the official SSBL Twitch. Send us a Prime sub if you're so inclined. Make sure you type here in all caps if you haven't already to enter yourself in for a drawing for a Turtle Beach headset at the end of the week. And join the Discord to find out everything SSBL related. This one's into right, and that one will drop down for at least a double. Looks like it'll stay a double, stand up double. One gone here is Brick House. With the Steeler trait, although she has like 10 speed. Berta, you gotta do it in all caps. DX Verda, what's your Discord? Are you are you the Express? Are you Nick? That one gets through and it's gonna be two nothing for the wrong fielders. Lumberjacks looking for answers. We go back to the top of the order. Number seven. Oh wait, she has 21 speed. Not yeah, she has 21 speed. 
But with the steal it, that's at least 30. Hopefully she doesn't actually try to steal it. I don't think she would because obvious reasons. Luzon, brainstorm. Not in time to dream. Shell be coming roundabout. Is hit well into right center, tracking back at the track, off of the top of the ball. It is three nothing. Ron Fielders putting on a show against the Jacks here at Colonial Plaza. And here, here he is, Pedro Cruz. Right to Chris Luzon, and he is 0 for 4 today, and that will put him at tense. Oh. And we will head into the top of the eight. Gene Dream lead things off. This ball is hit well, tracking back at the track of the wall. It's out of here. Dream puts the Lumberjacks on, and it's a two-run game. That was on the first pitch, too. Not wasting any time. That'll take days from on fire to locked in. Still only 70 pitches, though. Follow. I mean, I see what you're saying, DDC, but I will point out that you do need to score runs. Yep. That one is caught by Brick. Ow. Follow. Well, we did have 75% uh, of the vote in favor of the ROM fielders for this game. As the Lumberjacks are down to four outs right now to get back in it. Game of the game will be damage control in the bottom of this inning. That one is right to round him out. And we will head to the bottom of the eight. Romfielders out hitting the Lumberjacks eight to three. They have a three one lead. Looking to go 4 0 for the first time in maybe franchise history. I don't think I ever remember a time when the Ron Fitter started out 4 0. Follow. Follow. Walk to Elderberry. Now back, the first baseman, number 19. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, you know, DDC. I just, I, I just want to make sure everyone knows that in the, in the game of baseball, you do need to score runs. Dribbler, dream to second in time to first. Oh boy, Ooh. what was that? Whoa. Yeah, like what, what kind of fro is that? Trying to give the fans a souvenir. It didn't even excel at that. What well, could have been a dragon special is now a runner on second with one gone. Swing and a miss. D got running up there. Brings up Sophia Saturn. Here in the SSBL game of the night presented by Turtle Beach. Romfielders with a two run lead. Runner on second, two gone. That one gets below. Runner thought about it, but side not to go. Popped into left center. And making the grab is Gonzalez. So two runs are what the Lumberjacks need. But the Rom fielders, three outs away from going 4-0. Whitney said probably season three may have been the last time that they went 4-0 to start a season. It'll have to go through the top of the order. Days at 82 pitches, still locked in, full count to Destroyer. And just misses on the inside. 
Destroyer aboard, and now Gonzalez represents the tying run. 0 for 3 today. Specialist trait activated. Right back today. So the second in time. The throw to first in time. Dragon special. And the Jacks are down to their last out. Yeah. I think that was season four because on the spreadsheet it says that they went nine and the Wong Fielders went, I think, nine and five in season four. In season three, they went three and 11. So I think it was season four. Brainstorm is aboard. Look at the, uh, go to the Wong Fielders tab in that and see what their, um, how they started. Like, because they, they, their individual schedule. Oh, too right. quickly to tank Taigo. One strike away from the wrong fielders going 4 and 0. Oh. Right. Swing and a miss. He got rung up there. And the wrong fielders, hey, Gauchos, guess what? You've got some competition in the heroic evolution. The wrong fielders go 4 and 0, oh, and they take the win here at Colonial Plaza. A huge win for the ROM fielders. Gotta hand it to Rainy Days. Absolutely clutch performance going the full nine inning. <laughs> Just three hits on the day for the Lumberjacks. Baron Baronese gets the loss despite only giving up one earned run. Rainy Days, three hits, one earned run, two walks, nine strikeouts in nine innings pitched player of the game of course who else rainy days followed by boomer lasers and then he may have gotten the loss but he was the third star baron baronies so chrome your thoughts on that game as we move on from the ssbl game of the night presented by turtle beach it was a great pitching performance by rainy days a complete game the only thing that really she messed up on was that one home run. Other than that, she she was great the entire game. Boomer Lasers played well, getting that home run. Same thing and good hitting by uh, round him out by getting that double. So it was great that Rainy Days could get some run support. And also, apparently, it was a few pitches for a complete game. Really? Is that what they're saying? Yeah, that's what they're saying in the chat. Well, we're going to turn our attention to the SSBL blowout game of the night presented by... Uh, what was it? Uh, who was it presented by? Some Industries? It wasn't Lopsided Blowout industry. Industry. What, what What did you say? Lopside Industries. Lopside Industries. That's what it is. I have the memory of a goldfish. It's Jake Carter on the mound for the Gauchos. This is just their second game of the season, the Gauchos. It's interesting. It's just the schedule. Uh, it should be Biscuit, Tailwind, Watt, Banger, Hex, Colon, Steel, Billups, Dion for the Gauchos. As for... The Express, we got Heinke on the mound. Lineup, we have DDC, Nally Origin, Gwyn Atwood, Deb Woodruff, Hans McGregor, Lana Del Rey, Hans McGregor, Burpee Doyle, then Lana Del Rey, then Telly Mackin, and Knox Vargas. So we are heading. I love Founder Field at night, and that is exactly where we are headed. As we'll see how quickly we can get through this game. Although, knowing the Gauchos, there could be some hitting on the way for us. So, Chrome, what are your expectations for this game as I get the poll started up? Well, on paper, I expect. The Gauchos to win this game convincingly, but since it is Super Mega Baseball 3 and 
I guess stuff can happen. Let's see if that's true. We are underway here under the lights at Founders Field. I I love Founders Field, man. I'm like, Dragon, Dragons might need to make a move at some point in Founders Field because I really do like it. It is a nice looking field. Put in your votes. Who do you think will win? Batter Watts. Now batting the second baseman, number 10. Founders is dope. Just right field, man, and the corners are pretty short. I'll tell you, it's not nearly as short as uh, as Red Rock at right, but it certainly gives it a run for its money. Butter takes off for a second. The throw is in time. Sit down. This one to Doyle, throw to first, in time. So the Express get through a little bit of an interesting start from the Gauchos. DDC to lead things off. Of course, the uh, last time I saw the Express, they were robbed of a victory by the Knights. But should have been the first win for any franchise team. Well, no, not, not for any free test team, because the Sparrows have their first win. But uh, what should have been the first win for the Express, stolen away by Chase Clout out in center. Oh, yeah, I was there for that, too. That was, oh, man. Really, right? What's the distance to right in Founders? What's the distance to right in Red Rock? Right to Banger for the second out. The first baseman, number 39. Great. Ball inside. Right off of the Ooh. glove. Ouch. Oh, banger. That should have been caught there. Now batting the designated hitter, number 52. Oh, geez. In the Women's March Madness Tournament, Notre Dame beat Oklahoma. Whitney, close your ears. Beat Oklahoma 108 to 64. Oh. Dang. They scored 108 in women's basketball. Season. Number zero. Great. Granted, uh, I, I did stats for the Howard South Carolina game, so I'm used to teams not scoring a lot. As well as the out. Oh, that's right off a banger there. You didn't need a score update. <laughs> the, uh, the South Carolina Miami game was very low scoring as well. That one right to Doyle. Now batting, the right fielder, number 40. It was more so just pointing out that Howard didn't score a lot of points. I didn't do anything as that ball is jacked. Heading deep. Back to the track to the wall. It's out of here. The Gauchos go up 2-0. 423. Now batting the catcher. Number five. We steal. Hey, does everyone want to play a game right now? That's inside. It's called, inside. Uh, as we are in the uh, SSBL blowout game of the night presented by Lopside Industries. And we just get to, it's sort of like uh, those late night casts for baseball where like the games are at 10 p.m. East Coast. Outside. So like they just, they're completely off the rails. Because uh, Josh never listens to the fourth game. Um, let's see how bad everyone's bracket is. Did you do a uh, bracket for March Madness? Nah. 
I don't usually do brackets because my brackets never they always get ruined in the first round. Right to Mackin to Atwood, but not for a two-run shot puts the Gauchos ahead. Head to the bottom of the second. McGregor Doyle Relde do up for the Express. So I don't know who ESPN fan three four seven eight one nine six eight eight nine one is in our uh, SSBL group. Colin there. Looks like it's uh, one person voted for the Express to win. Oh, you had Iowa and Kentucky. Oof. So whoever, whoever, I don't know who you are, but whoever chose, if you're in the chat right now, uh, not Whitney, but if you chose Arizona as champion, you uh, are currently in the lead with 420 points. However, only a 12-20 max. With 10 less points, but a max of 1450 is just keep chopping, which I'm assuming is either DVC or no hummus. As she got run up there. Yeah, she swung way too early on that one. Now batting the center fielder, number five. So, actually, whoever is leading our group is actually in the 86th percentile with 420 points. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> that is how it, this, I feel like this has been one of the, the worst years in terms of like upsets and stuff. You think that's Dean? Just keep dropping is in the 77th percentile. Then you go to the next one, which is me, and it's in the 24th percentile. Dona is in the 19th. Rock Chalk Not Jayhawks is in the 15th. And poor old Whitney is also in the 15th percentile. Now, if we look at the women's tournament, is that one's right to Del Rey. The hit and run works out as Munner is able to advance to second. We set Jay Watt with two gone and a runner at second. Uh, I am in the 64th percentile. I think this is Dean again, is in the 81st percentile. Whoever uh, Hey Mom on TV is in the 26th, and Donut Boy is in the 22nd. At least you're beating Whitney. Which one are you? Are you the orange guy? Mackin, what a dive! What a play by Telly Mackin! Great defense right there. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Mackin Vargas, DVC, do up. The second baseman, number seven. I, I, I think I told everybody here, but I, for my class that I'm teaching, I told them that if both of my brackets are in less than the 60th percentile, uh, they, as he gets swung up there, uh, their last two reading quizzes will be automatic 100s. Holy, holy crap, I had Notre Dame over Oklahoma. That's inside. Sorry, Wit. Yeah, okay, so you are the orange lasers. Got rung up there, second straight strikeout. Winnie, I made a separate bracket where I literally decided against you have coin flip. That one was actually doing better than the one I actually thought about. Oh. Oh, you named it after me. As he gets rung up, three batters, three strikeouts. Carter is rolling here. And he is looking good, Chrome. The first baseman, number two. Yes, very. I wonder how much strikers he's gonna get at the end of this game. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to pull up a second screen because uh, Belmont is leading Tennessee 66-64. Whoa. 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Right side, Gwen Atwood. To Heinke for the first out. The third baseman, 
number two. Right. Man, I need a new GP. No. As I say that, the stock drops comes through and lets me know that there's more 3070 stock. Cause that one gets through fair. Well, that was close. To the right side, that'll be a one out double. quickly need this so Tennessee does have the ball so I'm gonna call the Tennessee game in I'm gonna call this runner on second one gone for Colin that ball's in the dirt but again for I think the third time tonight runner decides to hold off right back to Heike and they catch the runner in a pickle oh no oh, no. oh. bad throw and the runner Safe at third. Wow, that was surprising. Oh, that does not feel good. If you're an Express fan, a break for the Gauchos. Tennessee takes the lead. Yeah, I thought that he was gonna be she was gonna be out on that play. That's why you never give up, kids. Full count to Ernie Steele. Popped up, will it stay? It will stay in. Atwood makes the catch, so they get the second out. So, the Express should be out of it. Can the Gauchos benefit from this? So, Papia Billups. Doyle. No harm, no foul in the end. The Gachos unable to convert off of the air. Origin Atwood Woodruff do up for the Express. Why do they make the women's game quarters? Uh, the same reason why in women's lacrosse they have different sticks and they wear skirts. For no other reason other than they think that women are inferior and they have to make a difference. I'll tell you what it does is it means that there's less media timeouts because in um, men's they have media timeouts at the under 16, under 12, under 8, under 4, and then the first called timeout in the second half. Whereas for women's they only have it at the under 5. And then I like the first called timeout as well. Although for some reason they didn't, we didn't have a media timeout in our game on Sunday as he raised them up there. I mean, they at least made the three-point line the same for men and women now. Which is so much better. Well, I need Tennessee to advance here. Carter. Billups. Banger. They turn the dragon special. We'll head into the fifth. Dion, then top of the order, due up. Now battle, the center fielder, number five. So far, this is not a complete blowout. Yeah, That's one of the closer games so far. But that could turn on any second. That is true. It's only the fifth inning. Now back, the left fielder, number three. Miranda Biscuit. One gone. Where is, is Belmont in Tennessee? Where's Belmont? Uh, I think it is in Tennessee. It's in like, I forgot where it is. I'm not sure if it's like in Nashville. I don't think it's in Nashville, but I know it's in Tennessee. Because I think it is. It's a mere tailwind now after that walk, and that will do it for Heinke, Michelangelo. And they are spending a lot of time reviewing something here in this game. No. Check on the runner. Runner takes off. The throw is not in time. Biscuit at second. Runner takes off for third and safe again. Biscuit steals two. And he 
is swung up there. Tailwind caught looking. And that brings up Jay Watts. One, two. Left side, and that will make it 3 0 Gauchos. Watt finally breaks through. Great hit by Jay Watt right there. First baseman, number zero. Brutus Beggar. The University of Tennessee is in Knoxville, right? Uh, Yeah, I think so. I, I think Philmont look. is in Nashville. That's inside. Yeah, because I know. I just wait. I looked it up. Three one to banger. That one up the middle. Yeah, University of Tennessee is in uh, Knoxville. And is Belmont in Nashville? The third yeah. Person, number two. Yeah, Belmont's in Nashville. So I was right. Strike. One one. Ball inside. Two one count to Athena Hex. 2-2, two, two. runners on first and second, two gone. This is inside, full count, runners will go. And she gets rung up there. Led to the bottom of the fifth, only a 3-0 game. McGregor, Doyle, Raydell, do up. Now back, the catcher, number seven. Man, they keep on telling me that this RTX 3070 is in stock. And I'd love to get one. As this ball is hit well, tracking back at the track at the wall and run by Neon Dion. For the second game that I have cast, the Express get robbed in direct center. Wow. Yeah, isn't it crazy that this happened twice? Oh, the pain if you're an Express fan. The pain. And the one against the Knights was way worse because they could have won that game. They just need to stop hitting it into direct center. That one up the middle. The runner aboard with two gone. The second baseman, number seven. Hex, throw the first in time. Well, it should be 3 1 Express instead. They're still scoreless. Heading to the top of the six. Going to lead things off for the Gauchos. 69 66 to score in the Tennessee game. 10 seconds left. Belmont with the ball. Walk issued to Colin. Brings up Ernie Steele. Power and 76 contact. That one gets through. Runners on first and second now. The shortstop, number nine. Belmont desperation three, and there's a foul called on the court. That's inside. Break. That ball hit well into right, but at the track, making the catch is Vargas. Runner advances to third. Runners on the corners, one gone. Now batting, the center Here is Neon Dion, one. the woes of the Express, summed up in one player. Yes, and. Yes, sir. Runner takes so, off. So. This one's hit well into right, and that one oh. is gone. <laughs> A wow. horrid jump, and the Gauchos have blown it open against the Express.
To me, that would have been funny if the, if the right field would have that. That would have been like a revenge thing. But a nice home run by Dion. That like barely, that barely went out. An absolutely horrible attempt to rob it. Yeah. Popped up. At short. Not by Doyle. It would have been kind of funny if he did rob it because that would have been kind of like a revenge thing. Absolutely would have been. Instead, it's 6 0 Gauchos. That one up the middle and that gets through. Now battling the second baseman. Number 10. Oh. 2 to Watt. That one loops into center. Galcha is continuing to put on the pressure on the express. Number 0. That was, it was one three wrong fielders, right? Yeah. That'll do yeah. it for the top of the six. A nine spot will head into the bottom of the inning. Express still looking for their first run of this game. The right fielder, number 17. Ball inside. It was probably the game that happened before was probably the only game that wasn't that lopsided. As he gets run up there. The center fielder number brings up DDC. Yeah, it's been pretty one way so far this evening. Ball inside. Yeah. Aside from the game of the night. Presented by Turtle Beach. Well, I guess it's good that the game of the night was somewhat close. That's the way we structure it. And the Lumberjacks are looking for pitching and a bench bat. With some season nine thirds available. As he gets rung up there. Brings up Natalie Origin. one drops down and a little bit of an okay so he fumbles with a routine ball in the center but he can rob a home run number 39 that's interesting i guess the 70 fielding is i don't that one into right and that would slots one in a little bit of a two-out rally going. Now back, the designated hitter, number 52. Right. Oh. Oh. That's up. Tennessee did win it. As G gets rung up there. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Still a 6-0 lead. Now batting, the third base well, so far the ROM fielders have ruined the away sweep. No. The Gauchos look on track to go 2-0. In a tough division in the Heroic Evolution now with the ROM fielders starting out 4-0. Ron Fields will have a chance to make it five tomorrow against the Dragons. In the battle of two number ones, they'll travel to Lafayette Corner. Now batting, the right fielder, number 40. Inside. Oh. 
Marge, he's had to, he, Dion just had to rub it in after he robbed the home run. He, he hit the home run just to show them what he did rob. Win out Woods, steps in the back of a second out. He's, uh, he's not going to be winning any sportsmanship awards anytime soon. <laughs> That's down. Strike. Ball low. Two one to That's steal. Inside. Three one now. Break. Full count. And we will head to the seventh inning stretch. Six of the Gauchos. Want to thank everybody for tuning in here. For the final game of week three, day one, I am Fisek on the call, joined by Chrome. Make sure that you are following the official SSBL Twitch. Send us a prime sub if you're so inclined, as well as join the Discord to find out everything SSBL related. That'll do it for Jake Carter. Ashley Weber gets the call in for the Gauchos. Ashley Weber is pitching to Ernest Steele. That's kind of cool. I mean, Ernie Steele's the catcher and she's pitching. Why, why is that why is that interesting because they're both backyard sports characters oh i never played any of the backyard baseball games yeah i, I have like most of them so so yeah i had like backyard baseball soccer hockey football basketball. swing and it is he gets run out there Lana Radel. Yeah, I know. I think every single backyard baseball player has been in the SSBL. That's what Josh was saying, at least. Hex to Watts. Not in time to Banger. Express still looking for their first run of the game. Head to the eight. No, I had a childhood. I didn't really have a PC growing up. Like it was our family's computer. The game I I played RuneScape more than anything else. Oh yeah, I had football, baseball, and basketball. I had, yeah, I had backer football back in 2002. Great catch by Doyle. And 2004, although 2004 isn't really as good as 2002 in the first one. Are you calling me a nerd or are you calling him a nerd? Because if you're calling him a nerd, you're calling him a nerd for the same thing that you did. Or are you calling me a nerd because I did RuneScape? In which case, I think you need to look up what the definition of nerd is. Because uh, I guess what? We're both playing video games online. <laughs> yeah, we. I, I fail to see how that that is the defining thing that makes me a nerd is playing RuneScape. The game that, like, everybody played. Now batting, the designated hitter. Number now pitching. That'll do it for Tomato. Brett Ruiz gets the call. Runner takes off for a second. The throw is in the dirt, not in time. Hill in one for three today. Two two. Full count. Hill in battling. Great at bat from Tailwind here. Uh. In the end, it's two Radel, and they get the out. We will head to the bottom of the eighth. Six outs to get six runs for the Express. Vargas then top of the order. The right fielder, number so expansion 17. teams will play a total of uh, 64 games this season. As he gets rung up there, there will be at least two wins because I believe the expansion sides play each other in interleague play. 
So my question for you, Chrome, is what do you think the overall record is going to be for the expansion sides at the end of season eight? Maybe like, okay, 64 total games, right? So. And there's gonna be at least at least three wins because Sparrows already have one and there are, they play each other in intro. Maybe they'll get like five to 10. So you think potentially like 10 and 54 or five? I mean, those are two different numbers. Is it gonna be single digits or at least 10? I don't think they're gonna win more than 10. I think that they'll go. Well, here's the thing: is that the Mythic played the Angels, and as bad as the Mythic are, have you seen the Angels? So oh, yeah, I the think, Angels have not really been. I think potentially they could go like twelve and uh, twelve and fifty-two. Maybe like the ceiling would be like twelve for me, and the and the floor would be like five. The third baseman. First two runners aboard for the Gauchos. Break. Athena Hex. This ball is jacked. Hit well to the track to the wall. It's out of here. Nine nothing Gauchos. They are going to move to 2 0. Oh, and then they do play each other for two more. Oh, that's right. Two more in division of games as well. So it's uh, actually going to be at least five wins. Uh, all right. So I think the, the floor would be five. And the ceiling would be like 12. <laughs> it would have been really weird if this game ended 6-0 because I think the second game ended 6-0. Yeah, so, so that would be kind of... Did go to uh, nine. Raydell is only able to get one. Mars thinks 16 wins total, four wins each. I think the Sparrows are the best bet to uh, win the most. As that ball is hit well, tracking back at the track of the wall. It's out of here. And the Gauchos have blown it open. It's now 11 0 in the largest margin today. And it took a while for the Gauchos to roll it through here, but have just completely overwhelmed the Express. I knew this was gonna happen, but I didn't know like when it would happen. Like, it would happen all right away in the early innings, or it just happened like this one at the later innings. Mackin with a great dive in time for the second out. The left field, number three. As at this rate, the Express will not have scored in 18 innings, losing their last two games 19 to zero. Ouch. They have a negative 26 run differential. Oh. Well, they're going to break some records. Obviously not any good ones, but it's expected since they're an expansion team. Jalen Hamilton comes in. The Gauchos, if they don't score any more runs here, they won their first game 11-4. As that one is off of the glove of McGregor, but does stay in. Rio, BB prone. Break. Ooh, I want to see one more strike. Oh, oh I want to see if BB prone and came in activated. Now back to second baseman, number 10. Follow. Well, when this result holds, the Express will move to 0 and 4 in the season. Clearly, the bottom barrel in the heroic. Gauchos will move to 2 0. And what is looking like an intense fight in the heroic evolution. 
And Watt is aboard. So that's what it looks like with K-Man activated with BB Pro. Now the bases are loaded for Banger. Ball inside. To Doyle, throw to first in time. It'll stay at 11. Can the Express put up a run? It'll be Atwood, Woodruff, McGregor for the Express. The first baseman, number 39. Weber is locked in. Because I'm going to have to dip from this pretty quickly after the conclusion of the game. Atwood is through. Deb Woodruff. It's been a long stream today. Yeah. We're at about two and a half hours. Yeah, two. And she gets right up there. Two and a half hours. Not the longest stream we've ever had, but. I guess it just goes longer. Yeah. Well, also, like, I, I I'm supposed to be playing Fortnite right now. Oh. That's to Weber. Throw it a second in time. Throw it a first. The Dragon Special. The Gauchos wrap it up. Chrome, your thoughts on the games today as the Gauchos blast open the Express. Well... Most of the games were sponsored by Lopsat Industries, well, at least the first game one, game two, and game four. Um, with the third game, obviously, since that's the game of the week, it's going to be the more closer one. But with this score, you kind of expect that because you got the Gauchos on the rise, a team on the rise here with lots of great players, and then you have the Express and Expansion team right here. So I did not, I expected, like I said earlier, I expected a blowout to happen, but I didn't know when the, the Gauchos were going to score the runs, you know? I don't know if it's gonna be early in the early in the game or later in the game. And uh Yeah, it's kinda of what we all expected here. So great hitting by the gauchos, great pitching by the gauchos, but again, we expected it to happen, so Well that will do it for week three, day one here of the SSBL. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for a great round of games. I believe 7.30 is the start time tomorrow with Whitney on the call. I want to thank Chrome for joining us. I want to thank Turtle Beach for their sponsoring of the game of the night. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the SSBL. I am Fysak. Keep on rigging, everybody. Bye, everybody.